Hello folks, Abfielder here, welcome to another Minecraft tutorial and today we are covering map art or Minecraft map art how we take an image from the internet and how we convert that into map art I'm sure you've seen people have done this on like Hermitcraft and stuff and if you've seen my latest Let's Play on the Strangecraft server where I currently am you'll have seen that I've done this too and today I wanted to give you a tutorial on how to do it yourself so I'm heading over to the shopping district on the Strangecraft server to show off the map that I did and here we go, I turn the Strangecraft logo into a map. Let's get this into my hand here. There we go. And I want to show you guys how to do the same too. But before we get into that, I just want to quickly talk about subscriber numbers. The screenshot I've got on here is actually a little bit out of date. Now I've gone up to 67 subscribers and a big thank you to my new subscribers. But something like 76% of people in the last 28 days who watch my content, not subscribers. Come on folks, I'm so close to 100, just those 33 extra subscribers. I'd love to get there in time for Christmas, get myself a little Christmas present of that fancy YouTube link with my username. That'd be absolutely amazing. Anyway, if it turns out you don't like my content in future, you could always unsubscribe. Anyway folks, enough of that, let's jump into this tutorial. So then the first thing you need is an image and I'm just searching for Minecraft logo here. Now I want one that's fairly flat, not too bad on the colors. This is a pretty good choice. And so we're just gonna go ahead, we're on Google search. We're just gonna right click on the image and save it somewhere. So I'm just gonna save it to a screenshots folder I've got and then that will go ahead and download it. Now one problem with this you'll see is the image size for this one is 800 by 800. Now it's good to choose one that is a square. It makes it easier to get to the right size. But we actually need an image that is 128 by 128. And the reason for that I will show you now. It is because the standard map size or single map size in Minecraft is 128 by 128. So it really does help if you get an image that is exactly those specifications. It makes the next part a lot, lot better, a lot more reliable. And we'll go into how to resize an image quickly now using Photoshop. So if you open your image editing program, now you can do this in GIMP, which is free on the internet. I'm using Photoshop. And as you can see, I've actually already got 128 by 128 set up. I've got the background set to black. That shouldn't really matter because we're just gonna drag in our image over the top. So in the previous step, we grabbed an image and assuming you're on Windows, just go to the folder that it's in. It's on my second monitor at the moment. So all I'm doing is dragging it onto the canvas here. And you might just need to click once just to get that to display. I've dragged that on, but it's not displaying. So there we go, another click and it's there. It should automatically adjust it. And like I say, as long as you've got a square size that's bigger than 128 uh, to begin with, then you are all good. Go ahead, save that document. So I'm just saving it as a PSD for now, just in case I wanna edit it at a later stage. I have done in the past is a little bit of editing to make my image a little bit cleaner, but I don't think I need to do it with this one. We then wanna do a quick export as PNG. So we now have our 128 by 128 PNG. So what we wanna do now is generate ourselves an NBT file and we are on this website, rebean2001.com forward slash map art craft forward slash. I'll put the link down in the description. So go ahead and click on the map preview there and select the image that you created in the previous step. In the block selection, just go ahead and tick everything. Depending on your image, you might get away with carpets, but go for everything to begin with, and then it will generate you a material list. It's absolutely fantastic. You can leave everything else as you want. Leave staircasing on, you'll get a much better image. The only time you wanna turn that off is if it uh, is a really flat image. The one thing you'll see on the right-hand side is it's worth having a look at the blocks it has selected. Now, this image is not too bad. It's got just nine diamond blocks. If you are in survival, my last image had 5,000 diamond blocks, not great. So in some of these you have a choice. So you could change diamond blocks here, as you can see, to prismarine blocks. Hit that refresh materials at the top. And instead of diamond blocks, you've got the much more obtainable prismarine blocks there. So just keep that in mind, have a look at the blocks, see what you can generate. And you'll also have a preview there of what that map's actually gonna look like. It's not gonna be as clean as the image you got from Google, but it's gonna be pretty damn close. Like I say, everything else, have a play with it, but I would generally just leave it as the as the default. So leave staircase on, leave dither in at the Floyd Steinberg uh, algorithm. Everything else, leave as is. Then the very last thing you are going to need to do on this, and just because I've changed that, I just want to change that back to Prismarine. Last thing you need to do is hit download. Well, refresh first, then download. 
And there you go, it's downloading the MBT file we need for the next step. So let's talk about what we do with that MBT file. Okay, so I am in my Minecraft folder and that's in app data, roaming.minecraft. And then I'm in this folder that's called schematic. Now I have installed Fabric and then I also have a mod called Lightmatica. Now I highly recommend that you use these tools and how I do this tutorial will be using these tools. If you need to know how to install Lightmatica, just go ahead, search for it on YouTube. It's very easy to do. You'll need the Fabric. I don't think you need Fabric API, but you know, the, the guides are there on the, on the internet. Just go and find them. Once you've got them, you'll have this schematic folder. Go ahead in there, all I've done is create a folder. Now you could put it at the top level, but I've gone ahead and created a map art folder. I'm just gonna paste that MBT file that we created previously into this folder. It just keeps it a little bit cleaner. As you can see, it's a little bit disorganized. Now the one difference you might notice is most of these files are schematics and this is an MBT. That's cool, I will show you how to convert it into a schematic in the later stages of this build. You don't necessarily need to do it, it just makes things a little bit better. Okay, first off, I'm gonna show you how to do this in a creative world, and I've just right-clicked with the map there, and as you can see, I am in the middle, pretty much the middle of the map. I've got the chunk borders shown to do that in your world, F3 plus the G key, and we're gonna to head to the northwest corner of this map. As you can see, I've got a red box in pretty much the place, and we actually wanna stand one block out of this map to the north, only to the north. We still wanna be in bounds on the west, and as you can see, I'm outside of that chunk. I'm just gonna demonstrate that now. You can see by the blue line. So I'm in line with it west-east, but I'm one block out to the north, facing south. Hit the M key to open up the, the Lightmatica kind of menu, and then we're gonna go ahead and load the schematic. Now you will have only one file in here, and that's the green one, which is the MBT file. I've just been messing with the, the schematic. And you'll see a warning, don't worry too much about that. That's mainly mainly about the fact that we've got it in the MBT format. I am gonna show you how to create a schematic so that you can get rid of that error. It's not a problem in your creative world. So if you load that schematic and if you stood it in the exact right place, what you will now have is the, the schematic loaded in the correct orientation in the exact correct place for that map. There is a line of blocks that will not be represented on the map, they just help with the with like the coloring on the map. Now if you hold control and go to paste schematic in world on the bottom left, so that was number five, as you can see that at the moment there's nothing in that map. I'm just gonna get rid of the chunk borders. And I'm gonna go back to my stick control. Now I have actually done a video on Lightmatic and how to do this copy and paste, so I recommend checking that video out if you're struggling to keep up. Anyway, if you hit Shift and X, assuming you've set it up like I do in my tutorial video, that will paste the schematic into the world. As you can see, it is now a valid map. Looks awesome, doesn't it? And if you're gonna be doing this in survival, I imagine at this point in time, you are having a little bit of a heart attack <laughs> at the idea of building this. It's gonna take you a little while, folks. I'm not gonna lie, I've done this. Uh, the, the one thing I wanna show you is the further away you stand from the map, the better it looks because it's, it's not an art program, is it, Minecraft? It's gonna look a little bit pixelated as you stand up close. There's not a lot you can do about that, but the further way you stand, the better that image looks. But it looks really cool, you know, up, up close as well. And that, folks, is really how you do it. That's how you do it in creative anyway. Lovely and simple with Lightmatica and the, uh, the ability to paste. As I said, I have done a tutorial on copy and paste in Lightmatica. Just have a look at my ch channel, check it out. I will put it in the description down below. So now I'm gonna quickly show you how we turn this into a schematic. So we are gonna need the stick control again, and I have made a little mistake here because I've not changed the, the selection type. I'm gonna go ahead and unload my schematic. I'm gonna do the mouse wheel and control button and change it to the area selection. I'm gonna left click on that block there, and then I'm just gonna go into the area selection, go down one so that I will include those stone blocks. I'm then gonna go to the top right hand corner. Now remember we left clicked down the bottom. We are gonna right click on the, the most eastern block here. This one down here is the furthest out to the opposite corner. So that's got a broad selection of all the blocks selected. As you can see, it's not quite got all of them. We've got three or four rows on this map that go well above it. So if we go back into the area editor, which is M edit, area editor, and then just up the height on the Y axis like so. And then just double check, you've now got that box surrounding 
all of the blocks on this map. So we've got these blocks, but have we got the one over here? No, we have not. As you can see, it is one block above, so we'll extend it by one more. And as you know, we already lowered the bottom one at then that bottom right hand corner so that we got that. So all we now need to do is save our selection. So we hit the M key again. We go to the area editor. We save schematic. We we'll give it, you can't overwrite an existing one. So I'm just going to call it V2. I save that schematic and we now have a schematic file. And when we load it in our survival world or load it again in our uh, creative world, it is not going to moan. And folks, that is how you do it all in creative. Now, I am going to give you some tips on how to build this in survival because it is a little bit of a slog. Okay then folks, I'm going to assume you're building this in survival and I'm going to show you some tips for Lightmatica that just, I'm going to call them quality of life tips that make things just that little bit easier. So we're going to go ahead, find the northwest corner and we'll go out one block to the north, extra, outside that chunk as we did before. We will load the schematic that we created earlier. And there we have it. And as you can see, it's a nice complex mess and yeah, you're probably a little bit, oh, how am I gonna build that? So if we hit the M key and go into configuration menu and then go to the render layers, change that layers all to a layer range, set your max and min layers, and then just put a tick in that hot key, the top one only, and then if you use the page up and page down buttons, you, as you can see, you can sort of choose which layers you want to build. It's really, really useful, makes building a lot easier. It's not too bad for this because there's no blocks underneath, but it's still useful. Right, another one is the hotkeys. So if we go in back into the menu and uh, the configuration options and into the hotkeys, and we're looking for the open GUI schematic verifier. That is not set by default. I have set that to the M plus V key. And I highly recommend that you do that. And that just gets you into the verification. You can get there from the schematic placements configure. And if you do the start verification or you change the range, the range render layers and then the start verification it will tell you what blocks are missing from that layer if you left that at all it will tell you what blocks are missing from the whole schematic if I just do that now so there we have it thousands of blocks so I recommend you change that to the the layers that you've got rendered and that just helps you because it, it means you know which blocks you need in your inventory to do a particular layer and then if you go ahead and place in some of the blocks you will see that it starts to go down the number of blocks that were missing in that verification menu so I'll place some blocks as you can see it kind of highlights it in this pink color if you place one incorrectly it will highlight it I believe in orange if you placed it in the right place but the wrong orientation so like wood blocks for example so we have 82 stone blocks missing on this floor if I go in and place a couple more there we go and hit the M plus V key that I've set do the start verification now you don't need to do that every time but as you can see it is now down to 80 it has acknowledged that I've placed those two blocks in I only have 80 left to place really useful really helpful and it will also tell you when you have blocks in the wrong place and things like that that verification menu is superb for survival I'm just going to set the time today okay in the visuals you can enable or disable the rendering as you can see there but the one thing i wanted to show you here was essentially setting the the translucent the kind of that there you go if i hit toggle between them you can see them set that to true now the reason i recommend this is because if you don't there's a very good chance as you're building this you're going to keep falling through the blocks because they're not actually there it's particularly bad if the block is a little bit of a bluish color because you can't see that it has been placed. In the visuals, if I can find it, you can ghost block alpha. It, yeah. And if I slide this, you can see it makes it more or less translucent. So I highly recommend you do that as well. Those folks are my quality of life settings for building this thing up. The last thing I will very quickly talk about is there is another mod called Tweak Aru. Have a look at it. And the reason I recommended it is because this is staircasing, you have to place a lot of temporary blocks in to, to do those staircase. And if you've got tweakaroo, even in survival, you don't need to place in the temporary block. You can hold the control key and place it exactly where you want. It saves a load of time. Anyway, folks, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've, you can do your own map art now. As I said earlier, if you have, Hit the like button and definitely, definitely hit that subscribe button. Anyway, folks, I'm Abfielder. That's all I've got time for. Goodbye.